Got the lefty catcher, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the sound oh, was you. No. Oh, that sound was perfect. That was good. That All was right. good. If you if you look at the comments, <laughs> this one comment says the batter needs to move. Uh, no, the, the batter does the not rules. need to move. Yeah, the next comment is even better. That was a true <laughs> heads up play. Oh. Batter, batter did her <laughs> job like a brick wall. Oh, man. Oh, that's good. Yeah. She, the batter didn't move her feet. So she was... It's not interference. And that catcher really just got a free shot. <laughs> <laughs> the girl just... Catcher whams her in the head and goes just yeah. like, <laughs> whoops. Got to know the rules. Got to know the rules. Got to. Oh, that was a good laugh to start. Oh, yeah. So you get a free, you get a free bag at third base. You get a free shot to just smoke someone in the face. And really, I feel like there was just a lose-lose for the batter. In that situation. Yeah, like like she protected her runner, yeah. Stood her ground, didn't move her feet. Umpire couldn't call interference because she didn't move. It's like she did the right thing. She's she's essentially a softball martyr. That's what it what it boils down to. Oh she said, nope, I'm taking this one for my team. That was a pretty good sound. That sounded kind of just like the video. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I, I have, That's my side hustle, you know? So this is one of my side hustles, but the other one, I make sound effects for the Right? You should probably not stick to that one. That's my whip sound. Whoosh. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now that we've had a good laugh to begin. Ooh, my eyes are watering. That one really got me. <laughs> the thing, too, let's, let's just pause for a second. The thing, too, the catcher is literally left-handed. All you got to do yeah, is she's... swing out oh. and just. Yeah. Oh. She could have stayed exactly where she was. Like, caught the ball, dropped to her knees, sidearm. Nah, let's, let's get onto our feet, turn our shoulders, square up, you know, get their shoulders pointed at third base, which is directly behind the hitter because you you didn't clear the hitter. <laughs> just poor, you know, just whatever coaches are teaching her. Honestly, like I said – the catcher got a free shot and she took her free shot. Yeah. She knew what she was doing. She had pretty decent footwork. Like it wasn't like, you know, her shoulders were pointed to second base and she just like flung the ball to third. You know what I'm saying? Like she got up, got her feet turned turn, her feet. Her yeah. Turn. Got her, got her feet planted underneath her, got her shoulders pointed to third and just every bit of the throw, just right smack in the face. Oh, that's tough. She she knew what she was doing. She wanted to do that. They must have been losing. She must have been mad. They must have been beefing or something, yeah. Ooh. Well, <laughs> joke's on you, kid. Joke's on you. You gave a free bag. All right, on this episode of Yellow Ball, <laughs> oh. we're talking about the Big Ten. Ten? Big ten. Ten. 
10. 10? How do you say it? 10 or 10? Tan. tan. I didn't say tan. The big, come on now, the big tan. You for real? That's what it, that's what it sounded like. Oh, I hate you sometimes. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the big tin. No, I got it, Ashley. Don't you worry. <laughs> we're talking about the big tin. So they finish up the regular season last year. With Northwestern finishing on top, Indiana, that came out like like I had peanut butter in my mouth. Northwestern. So <laughs> you had Northwestern finish atop the league at the end of the regular season. Indiana was second. Minnesota was third. I go into the conference tournament, North Northwestern. Ends up pulling out a close one against Indiana in the, the conference championship. So your Wildcats are crowned victorious. They're the Big Ten conference champions all the way around. After going 20 and 3 in conference and then winning the tournament. Pretty solid year for the old Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at what I wrote down, and I don't know why I didn't remember that they were 20 and 3. That's probably because you didn't write it down. Well, I typed it. Mm. So, yeah, well, you must not have typed it as good as I did. Whatever. <laughs> All right, so if we're talking about this upcoming season, we're looking at Northwestern. We will start looking at Northwestern, who was forty-two and thirteen overall last year. Again, twenty and three in the conference. Um, as a team, not really smacking the cover off the ball. Batting 290, hit 55 home runs. It's, I mean, that's that's okay, but and we were talking about ACC teams a week ago. You're talking everyone's at least the top three or 65 or better home runs. Uh, scored 321 runs on the year. Team on base percentage of 392. They walked 194 times. Dude, this is this eats me up when I see these numbers. And you walk significantly less than the amount of times that you strike out. Northwestern struck out almost a hundred times more than they walked. They walked 194 times as a team. They struck out 292 times. No, see that just And they don't have a lot of stolen bases on the year either. They only have 48 stolen bases as a team. That's that's not very much. I mean, you're talking about one through nine, maybe 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 throwing in a couple more bench players in there, you know, so maybe one through eleven, one through twelve. Everybody has an average of maybe four to six or seven stolen bases on the year. Yeah. That's not that's not really that's not really doing a whole lot offensively. I don't so I yeah, I don't like their offensive production numbers whatsoever. Their team defense they fielded 973, only making 40 errors on the year. That's not bad. It's not great. And you're not talking elite defense here, but it's solid. I mean, it's you would expect to win some of the ball. Top yeah, I mean, it's better than some yeah. of the top programs that we've seen. Yeah, but I mean, like, when you're talking about it, you, you kind of run into, I don't know, it's not as bad as Duke, because Duke was, what, like 961 or something like that? Something similar to that, yeah. Yeah, so, but Duke also had a better team ERA than Northwestern. Northwestern's staff ERA on the year 
was a two nine six. So almost a three. They gave up 181. So pitching and defense combined gave up 181 runs and opponents were batting 241. Those are not very good pitching numbers when you're talking about elite level pitching this not saying that Northwestern wasn't a good ball club because obviously they were a good ball club. They did really, really well, both in and out of conference. Cool. And they go on to a super regional. But man, when you're talking about getting to that next level and making it to the World Series, it's just that pitching and that pitching coupled with that defense and that offense is uh, it's just not going to cut it. It's just not going to happen. Um. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe they can turn that around this year. Let's look at some of the players that they lost from last year. Ashley, who do you got? I got uh, Jordan Rush. He was their stud catcher last year. Um, Nine ninety-seven fielding percentage on almost three hundred fifty chances. Pretty solid. Probably why she was. Um, one of the strongest defensive players in the conference and in the country, um, especially in the 2022 year, she had, she's been a gold glove winner. She was a defensive player of the year nationally and the Johnny bench award, um, which is a pretty cool award to win. But on the other side of the ball, offensively, she was pretty solid as well. She had a 331 batting average, 430 on base percentage, uh, 56 hits, 11 doubles, nine homers, I mean, just all around a pretty solid player in my Yeah, making a, making a pretty good name for herself in Athletes mm-hmm. Unlimited, too. Um, yeah, and then, you know, her <clears> – her oh, part of her tag team, I guess you could say, and Danielle Williams, Northwestern starting pitcher from a year ago. Uh, she went 23-3 and on the year last year with a 2-2-2 ERA. At 196 strikeouts in 164 innings. That was that was Northwestern's ace. She's not there anymore. So I mean, granted, her ERA was not anything to really brag about. Like you're still talking about a girl who gave you 23 wins over half of your wins on the year and only lost three. Um so I mean it's really tough to lose a workhorse like that yeah tough to lose a battery yeah yeah but i mean you talk about their returners like they have some good pieces coming back um i mean some some key pieces that that should keep them at that 290 300 team batting average um but they're definitely going to need some some girls to step up um first one i got on my list is angela zedek 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 I don't, i'm not, not really sure how to pronounce her last name um but she batted 315 on the year finished up with 12 home runs 41 rbis and 40 runs scored so you're talking 81 runs that she's either she's in some way responsible for um so it's a fairly significant chunk of the 321 runs that they scored <laughs> on base percentage though not we were talking about this before we started recording not not super stellar um just at 385 you like to see that at 400 or better when you're talking about elite offensive production um but i mean where she where she misses out or lacks in on base percentage she kind of makes up for in home runs so more of a i say more of a home run threat like a home run she, she takes the high risk for the high reward and that she's she's gonna she's going up there trying to do damage and put the ball over the fence, but she's probably going to strike out a bunch of times too. So, I yeah, mean, she's it's just a given. Going all in on her swing every time. Yeah, and I mean, there there are players where that works out for them. 
Um, you and I were not those players. <laughs> Definitely no. more of a hit for average, trust our hands, look to hit line drives, not try to drop bombs. Um, but, I mean, that's pretty decent production out of, out of Ms. Zedek there. Um, let you talk about the next one, Kelsey Nader. Uh, outfielder returning. She was a freshman last year. Um, played in the fifty, played in fifty four of their games. So I mean, that's got to mean something. She brings to the table a three twelve batting average with a three eighty three on base percentage. So show, so she's sitting right below um Angela. Is it? Did we decide how to say her name? Zedek. We'll just say Zedek. Okay, sitting right below her. Um, but she did not put up home run numbers. Instead, she just brought in 43 hits with seven doubles, was seven for seven in stolen bases, though. So brings a little bit of speed to the table with the contact hitter, um, which is pretty nice. Yeah, you, I mean, you can probably expect, since she was a freshman last year, probably expect her to get more playing time than what she did this year, probably some, some more starts. Because uh, you said she played in 54 games, and she didn't start every one of those games, right? No, she started forty eight of them. Yeah, so I mean, you're you'd expect her to get a couple more starts. Um, that's going to lead to some more at bats, probably a little bit more, a little bit more offensive production as she gets more comfortable. Um, next up, we got Hannah Caddy. Caddy, right? Caddy. I don't. I don't know. Some people spell Katie with the C like that, so I don't. I'm not one hundred percent sure. True. Hannah Caddy, Hannah Katie. Uh, either way, she had 285 last year with six home runs, 29 RBIs, and 42 runs scored. Um, where she lacked in her ability to drive the ball, you know, rack up hits, she still got on base a good bit uh, with a 410 on base percentage and 19 walks. She got hit 16 times. So you get 19 walks with 16 hit by pitches. You're talking about 35, 35 instances where she gets on base for free. That's you gotta love that. Um I just I mean, there's not much more to say about that. Like she get she gets on base. She finds a way to get on base. Really a true, truly a team first approach in the box. Find a way to get on base, and Wait, let everybody yeah. else. Yeah, let her, let everybody else drive you in. Yep. You got two more on the list. <laughs> I got Kansas Robinson, uh, infielder, uh, freshman as well, and I believe her and Kelsey Nadar were the two freshmen that made it into the starting lineup. So that's pretty. Pretty neat. Um, Kansas Robinson, though, hit 284 um, and had a 415 on base percentage. So kind of sitting right there with Hannah Caddy, Hannah Caddy, um, with just finding a way on. Uh, she did, though, produce nine home runs. It's pretty – Oh, yeah, that's solid. Not necessarily stellar, but that's pretty solid home run. Home yeah, that's, re that. that's respectable home run numbers out of your freshman for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have Northwestern's number two pitcher last year, uh, and Lauren Boyd. She went eight and four on the year at a two, two, four ERA, 102 innings pitched, 93 strikeouts on the year, uh, held opponents to a 237 batting average. Uh, very, very similar to Daniel Williams has the potential to be. So just slide right into that number that number one role, and do the same thing Daniel Williams did. Um, but again, uh, when you're talking about an ERA that's over a two, you're. I mean, help me out, Ashley. Like you're. It's just not elite level pitching, right? Like we're 
And you're talking about the Jordy Balls of the world, the the Montana Fouts is the oh man, uh Najri Kennedy's like you're it's it's just not, not elite level stuff. And so yeah, while it may be good early in the year and in conference play, beyond that, uh, you're you're looking at a grind. You're looking at a little bit of a struggle bus. Yeah, and what's crazy too is Northwestern's top two pitchers, a two 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 and a two two four ERA. Northwestern still goes out and produces a season that they had. So imagine you put with up- very with very little offensive projection on top of that. Projection? I had, come, come on, dog. I had water in my mouth. Like, chill out. Just keep going. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Little offensive production. Uh, so, I mean, imagine if you get that ERA closer to two or under two. I imagine, I mean, they still made it all the way to supers, but I imagine they might just be just you know, that much, that much better. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, so you had the you had Daniel Williams, Lauren Boyd, one and two last year. Um, this year, probably looking at a Lauren Boyd and transfer Ashley Miller, graduate transfer from Michigan State, who last year had a a not so great year. We'll say she she had an ERA north of four, um, but the two years prior she was under a two, right? But both years 1. 9, prior, 1. 8, I think for both of them. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the potential for her to 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 step into the number one role with those numbers are pretty good. I mean, you know that the ability is there. So maybe last year she, you know, she maybe have been dealing with the injury or you know just really lost feel for a pitch and really couldn't. And and that pitch happened to be her out pitch the two years prior, and so she she really didn't have a, an out pitch anymore. So, I mean, I don't I don't know the full story with that one, but and and you know why her numbers just kind of plummeted like that. But I mean, you know the ability is there. You know she has it in her. It's just a matter of finding it again. So I, I would definitely look for. A Lauren Boyd, Ashley Miller, kind of one, two, figuring out who's really and truly the workhorse, who they're going to ride all season long. Um, I would definitely look for that battle to come out of those two right here. Yeah, I think one thing to note about Ashley Miller, too, is that in her time at Michigan State, she had almost 500 strikeouts in those three years. One year she collected, I think it was like 244. So one year counts from his half of them. But I think to me what stands out is that in 400-something innings that she pitched, she only allowed 16 home runs, which tells me that she's pretty good at controlling the location of her pitch and limiting super hard, powerful, damaging home run balls. Yeah, and, she's she's probably good at mixing her pitches and keeping keeping hitters timing off, like keeping them off balance. You know, throwing a rise ball one pitch, coming back with a change up, coming back in with a with a screw ball, right? Mm-hmm. You you throw a change up out over the plate, you get a you get a hitter, you know, kind of diving over the plate, reaching for the ball, and then you bust them back in with a screw ball in on, under their hands, and then like they don't know what's coming, they're uncomfortable in the box. She probably has a really good idea as to how to pitch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would not be surprised to see her kind of just like really take over and kind of fill that void where, you know, Northwestern loses Danielle Williams. Um, aside from that, Northwestern brings in eight freshmen. Um, it's a huge freshman class. Well, it's a huge class that they lost, so you got to make up for it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, in the day and in, in, in the age of the transfer portal, you go out and get one transfer, and then you bring in eight eight freshmen. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I, Northwestern knows how to win, uh, clearly, but 
just a little bit shocking that you don't bring in more transfers. You bring in a pretty large freshman class. Um, but yeah, I mean that that pretty much that kind of wraps it up for for Northwestern, huh? Yeah, that's about all I got. All right, the Hoosiers. Moving on into the Hoosiers. Don't ever Indiana say it like goes, that ever again. <laughs> Indiana goes forty-four and eighteen last year, uh, eighteen and five in conference. Remember, they finished second in conference, lost a close one in the conference tournament to Northwestern. Um, they bat three eleven last year as a team, put up eighty-five home runs. That's those are some power numbers right there. Listen, listen. Do you have how many runs they scored? No, I don't have how many notes? runs they scored. Oh man, they scored so many runs. Four hundred and thirty-two runs last year. That's well, a lot of runs. That's a lot of runs. Uh, and their their team on base percentage was four seventeen. That's yeah. that's good. That's, That's really why they got good. so many runs scored. That with 85, 85 home runs. Yeah. So they're I don't I'm not super fond of their strikeout to walk ratio because their strikeouts are more than their walks, but it's it's very close to one to one. They strike out 256 times and walk 227 times. So not great by any means. You'd like to see those walks almost more of a you know doubling the strikeout numbers. Um, but when they got on base, they made it count with by either with either a home run or they also stole 108 bags last year as a team. Now, some of that came from a particular someone that they don't have anymore. Um, yeah, but they had a 959 fielding percentage, which is not not good. It's not like bad news bears, but it's not good. Uh, 75 errors. Pitching did not help them very much last year. They had a 378 ERA. Pitching yeah, I think that might be – pitching defense might be what uh, kept them from, from going further in the postseason than they did. Um, yeah, you're talking about um, a pitching staff and a, a defense that combined gave up 275 runs on the year. So they're outscoring their opponents significantly, but – they're not outscoring their opponents by 300 runs like Florida State is. Right. Not even 200. So opponents batting average 277. Like that's that's entirely too close to your team batting average. You're you're talking about you're you're giving up four about four runs a game. So every single game, you know, going into it, you have to score at least five yeah, to you give yourself a big number, right? To give yourself yeah, any to give yourself chance. a chance a chance to win. Yeah, that's you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, but um, even more so this year with the loss of the one and only Taryn Kern. Round of applause for Taryn Kern. Let me tell you. <laughs> what a player. Yeah, just phenomenal athlete. As a freshman, too, puts up insane numbers for anybody, let alone a freshman. Yeah. Like 23 bombs? <laughs> right? 23 bombs? 20, yeah. Mm hmm. What was she bat? She batted, let's see, 404. Oh, man. And then on top yes. of that, she's on base almost six out of ten times. She had an on-base percentage of 578. 
that's Valerie Cagle status. Yeah. Yeah. That's that is insane. Can you talk about a stellar athlete? <laughs> Another insane part. I mean, all of her stats are insane. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, she she swiped a bunch of bags too. Swiped a bunch a bunks. Swiped a bunch of bags. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Swiped a bunch of bags. But what I'm looking at is the fact that she had 45 walks. Yeah. With 22 no, hit by pitches. Bro. Well, that's why her on base percentage is almost 600. Yeah, you're giving her almost 70 free bags. Bro. That's. The, I, yeah. I, 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 I am curious. Taryn Kearns now at Stanford. I am very curious to see how those numbers translate to the Pac 12 or she's having to face UCLA. And Washington and Oregon on an everyday basis. Yeah. Like, not, not, <laughs> is your power trying to go out over there? I, I don't know, but if it goes out, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean, not obviously like she's a good player. You don't put up those kinds of numbers and, not be a good player, you know, like I I fully anticipate her still being very good in, in the Pac-12, but will she be as good? Will she have another 20 plus home run season or will she kind of mellow out? You know, maybe hit oh. 10, 10 to 12. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe only get on base. 45% of the time. <laughs> well, what a problem to have. Right, yeah. Nevertheless, Indiana's going to be hurting without Taylor Taryn Kern. They're they're going to be missing Miss Kern for sure. Um but they do have a couple of returners coming back. They got Taylor Minnick, outfielder for him last year. She batted 390. Hit 12 home runs with 55 RBIs and 26 runs scored. She had a really good on-base percentage, too, up there with with Taryn Kearns at 522. She had 36 walks on the year. Um, I look for her to do more of the same this year, right? Yeah, I would expect her to be pretty similar. I mean, the only thing for her that I, that I was kind of questioning was I don't think that she played much defense. And I think she kind of sat in as their DP. And so I'm wondering, do they keep her in that role? Yeah, yeah. She may have to take on a little bit more defensive role with Taryn Kern out. Yeah. Taryn Kern played outfield, right? No. No. Well, I'm dumb, I guess. But maybe they move outfielder to the infield. You never know. Yeah, it's possible. Man, I feel real dumb for saying that. (laughs) Well... Talking talking about one of the best players in the country, and I'm just like, yeah, where'd she play? Yeah, idiot, idiot. Maybe we maybe we can just cut cut that out, you know? Sound yeah. effects, good side gig. You you like that? <laughs> oh. oh man. All right, who All else right. we got coming back? <laughs> let's see, let's see. I got Cora Bassett. Okay, yeah. yeah. Utility. Utility player. Um, Again, pretty solid all around. She had a 319 batting average with um, 436 on base percentage. So, I mean, yeah. so it's... far, everybody we've talked about, their on base percentages are just steps up from multiple people that we've talked about previously. Um, but she yeah. she racked in 30, 31 walks with twelve hit by pitches, so you're looking at forty three. God, I need to go back to math. Forty three free bags for her. Um, sixty seven runs, sixty hits, fifteen doubles, and she seems to be their their bag swiper for them. Uh, eighteen for nineteen in stolen bases. So pretty speedy, and. I'm thinking 
she's probably going to continue this trend. If if you're a contact hitter, racked in 15 doubles last year, I don't know why you wouldn't come back and just try to do the why, why need to come back to hit it over the fence when you can just wipe all the bags yourself. Yeah, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like keep playing keep playing your game, get on base, steal bags. That's exciting. Like the home run is exciting, but like watching fast base runners is super exciting. I like that's, watching that's, people that still third. Yeah. I don't know why. Second base, okay, I, yes, I do like watching that. But still in third is just a whole different level. I like I like watching girls get down the line. On just a chopper on the infield, beating that out. I like girls hitting a single into the outfield and stretching it and making it a double because the outfield's taking too long to get to the ball or taking too long to get into the infield. Uh, yeah, speed is just – it adds a whole new element to the game and it just makes it way more exciting. You put – speed puts pressure on the defense, that pressure – Makes the defense errors. tight. It makes them rush. Yeah, they make errors, and the game just gets really, really exciting. It's just speed is a, is a undervalued commodity in both baseball and softball. More so baseball, but definitely in both games. Anyway, next returner we got is Brianna Copeland. She. Was their ace last year? She went 24 and 4 on the year. She had a 306 ERA through 171 and a third innings. Only had 148 strikeouts. Um, Not my favorite again, pitching stats. Yeah, I mean, It's not the ACC, it's not the SEC, it's not the Big 12, it's not the Pac-12. It's the Big 10. <laughs> it's the Big 10 where may, maybe maybe what it is is the Big 10 just hits better than everybody else. Maybe that's what it is. I feel like that's not true. I, I was just thinking about how we just said Northwestern had a 290 batting average. But <laughs> I'm just going to let you have that one. I mean, I, I did just whisper into the mic. That's that's not true. But, yeah, I mean, opponents were batting 265 against her. Like, again, I mean, she still throws up 24 wins and only loses four times, but – You know, like we gotta we gotta figure out a way to do better. Yeah. Like it seems at least for most of the teams that we've talked about thus far in the Big Ten, the Big Ten is all about offense, offense, offense. Let's just score as many runs as we possibly can and hope that our pitchers can keep Holy. our opponents. Yeah, like I mean, you look at Brianna Copeland's offensive production because she hits too. She's a utility player, and Solid. she bats three. She bats three eighteen, hits fourteen home runs, forty eight RBIs, thirty seven runs scored. Her on base percentage was above four hundred again. She's at four hundred three. She had twenty walks. She stole thirteen bases. Like we're we're definitely an offensive mindset team. At Indiana, like we are all about offense, not so much defense and pitching. Yeah, but and, you gotta hope that, that this coming year, with with the loss of their uh, stellar player in Taryn Kern, you gotta hope that they just take their pitching staff just a little bit. To crank it up a little bit in off season, really, really work on them, and then you got to hope that they keep their offensive numbers too. You do that, and Indiana is way further in the postseason than they than they were. Yeah, I, I mean, you look at what they're not replacing Taryn Kern. Mm -mm. One, you you couldn't if you tried. 
but they're not bringing in any transfers. Zero transfers. So you're not you're not bringing in anybody else that has experience to try to fill the void in your lineup that Taron Kern occupied last year. So you're just kind of hoping for the best with this freshman class. Now they have two freshmen that are coming in. One of them, Allie Van Brant, utility player out of Michigan. She was last year's Michigan Miss softball. Uh, she comes out of high school with a career 641 um, batting average. I mean, that's pretty That's pretty good. I mean, you bat 641 throughout your entire high school career. Um, again, high school talent, not quite the same as Power 5 Division One talent, but there's Is potential ranked, there. She, she was ranked the number three infielder um, and number 21 overall player. Uh, by extra innings. So my thought here is that maybe they're looking or maybe they could look towards her to help with the Taryn Kern absence uh, defensively, yeah. at least. That could help. I don't know what, what position in the infield she plays. I think Taryn Kern was first baseman. And if she wasn't, then she sure did have a lot of balls hit to her because she had 230 chances on defense. So... I don't know that what could, position... that could be. That could be a third base shortstop. Now we both sound like idiots for not knowing where Taryn Kern played. I'm pretty sure she's a first baseman. But either either way, you also have Tristan Thompson coming in. Um, throughout her entire high school career, she put up 59 home runs. So, granted that that's, you know. Tris or Tristan Taryn Kern put up half that in one season, so there's there's that. Again, try as you might, you're not replacing Taryn Kern. It's just not happening. No, there. I mean, there's no unless there's unless the numbers up unless you get Valerie Cagle. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Not. Unless unless you got Valerie Cagle. <laughs> Then your pitching would go up too. Your pitching would be stellar. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, not not that a whole team's performance relies is dependent upon one person, but when that one person is responsible for that much offensive production for you, like it's hard to say that they didn't basically, you know, march on lynch it and carry the team on their back. I'm just saying. Taryn Kern went into beast mode last year and put the team on her back. It is what it is. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Except I'm not. I'm not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Taryn Kern played second, by the way. We said every position. Every position except for second base. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad you figured that one out. Yeah, it was really gonna bug me. How tall is she? That's the that's the that's the most important question. Let's see. She's got to be like six one. Like every other Division One second baseman we've seen in person. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, I don't think it says her height in there. Mm. Watch, she's like five two. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, I mean, as far as Indiana goes, like if they can figure out their pitching and their defense, they're going to be pretty good. I think offensively they're going to find a way to make up for the lost production from Taryn Kern um, just because they're obviously a very heavily heavily offensive mindset team. Like that's that's what they're – clearly that's what their primary focus is. Um, but if they can 
figure out a way to I don't want to say shift that focus because they're really going to have to double down on offense with the absence of Taron Kern. Um, but if they can, if they can figure out how to lower their staff ERA and just, just have better pitching performances all the way around, they're going to be all right. I'm sure there'll still be a really good ball club this year, but they're going to have a hard time. Same as Northwestern, they're going to have a hard time getting over that hump and pushing past regional, super regional, if they can't figure out pitching. Agreed. All right, moving on. Minnesota Golden Gophers. Golden Gopher, I don't – whatever. Besides the point, <laughs> stop making that face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a gopher looks like, bro. Whatever. Um, they finished third in the regular season, had a 38-19 uh, overall record with a 17-6 and conference record. Whatever. Offensive production, dog. <laughs> <The> offensive <laughs> production. Just – yeah. Pretty does gross. something different for the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Indiana must have been an outlier because they had good offensive production. Minnesota mm -hmm. and Northwestern just 285 and 290. Not doing it for me. <laughs> I, I will say Minnesota put up better power numbers with 72 home runs on a year. That's a lot better than Northwestern, but 285. And they only scored 288 times. How? I'll Can't tell you that. how. I'll tell you how. They struck out 254 times and only walked 164 times. Yeah, that that might have a little bit of a factor. Guess how many stolen bases they had? 44. Twenty-three. Nope. <laughs> Team on base percentage was three sixty-seven. Yeah, they're. I'm not sure what's going on in the Big Ten. Oh, offensively, it ain't it. I mean, pitching is not. Not dominant either. <clears throat> if if I'm if I'm any team outside of the Big Ten, I'm still afraid. Not afraid. I'm still. What's the word I'm looking for? Concerned. No, we'll just say aware. Of Indiana's offensive explosions, right? I'm still aware of their ability to drive in runs. I'm not concerned about Minnesota and Northwestern. Like if if I if if I'm Stanford. And I have Najri Kennedy. I'm gonna expect to have we'll say ten strikeouts that game. I think that's a pretty fair expectation. Mind you, we're talking about a pitcher who finished with a sub one ERA. Just and just throwing that out. Sub there. point seven ERA, really. Yeah, like that's a next level pitcher, but but I mean the same could be said for oh man, I don't want to say Montana Fouts because she's not there anymore. Um, Kayla Beaver, Alabama's transfer from Central Arkansas. 
like or if if not strikeouts like just weak rollovers weak rollovers weak pop-ups uh Millie Thompson I'm getting I'm getting rollovers and pop-ups all day with that change up baby like <laughs> like uh I, I I am not worried about their offense putting up runs against me. When it comes to Indiana, different story. Definitely worried. Yeah, but I'm confident that our offense can put up runs against them. I'm confident that If I'm if I'm a team outside of the Big Ten, I'm confident that we're gonna put up runs and they're not. <laughs> if we're playing Indiana, I'm confident that we're both gonna put up runs. Just I'm just not feeling the Big Ten here. I'm not I don't know. I'm I don't know what I'm not feeling other than the Big Ten, but I'm not I don't like it's not that I don't like, but I don't like <laughs> the fact the fact that they finished third in the conference. Minnesota with a two eighty five on batting yeah. average and a three sixty seven on and base a, percentage. Yeah, less than four hundred on base percentage. That's well that's that's well under 400. That's not even close. Okay, well, I, I was saying that cuz I'm thinking like you should <laughs> you should shoot for a goal of a 400 on base percentage. And they're like rocking a solid 33 points below. 33 I don't know if points is the right term. Points points today. Yeah, so. point points is right. You're right. Yeah, I'm not Yeah, I mean, their team their team defense wasn't bad. 971, mm -hmm. four, 46, 46 errors on the year. Uh I mean that that was about the same as as uh Florida State, right? Or Duke? Duke was a 961. Yeah, I think it's Florida State. Yeah. And but again, not not dominant pitching. They're sitting at a 221 ERA. 225 opponent batting average between defense and pitching. They gave up 170 runs. So, I mean, they're still outscoring their opponents. Not really sure how, but they are. I don't know, man. I just don't understand. I don't understand how with those numbers as a team they had as – successful of a year as they did um anyway key losses they have Amani bradley she was their left fielder last year she batted 286 had one home run uh i mean you got natalie din hartog I, I i'm that's how her last name is spelled She was, I'm well aware. <laughs> she was our sorry center for the last year. So you're talking about you're talking about the two you're talking about two thirds of your outfield that you're having to replace this year. That's the main reason I put those two down. And um Natalie batted 315 and put up 13 home runs. So she was Drove in 38 and scored 42 times. She she was a much bigger, much more important offensive um, piece than Amani Bradley was. But, I mean, you're still talking about two-thirds of your outfield that you're having to replace this year. Those are the main reasons that I wrote those two down. But more importantly, you're losing your ace in a circle who was way better Than the rest of the pitching staff. Yeah. What's her name? Autumn Pease. She, uh. That's how Rawlings says, please. <laughs> It's Pease, have this. It's I really cute. Actually. It's hard to tell him no. I was about to say, I don't think I'd be able to be like, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, you can have anything you want. Here you go. <laughs>
Oh man, when we were putting him to bed, he goes, Daddy, peace seep with you. Peace seep in your bed. <laughs> oh, it was so hard to tell him no. Oh, so poor it guy. was so hard. It was so hard. Anyway, back to okay. Autumn Peace. <laughs> Autumn Peace was a big to big. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was just so hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, Autumn Peace was the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year. <laughs> so far, best numbers we've seen. She she put up a 1.46 ERA, significantly better than her team's ERA. Uh, had a 27 and seven record with 215.1 innings pitched. Obviously, the workhorse for their team. Um, I like her stat of walk to strikeout ratio: twenty nine walks, two hundred seventy three strikeouts. Out opponents to a one eighty nine batting average. That would be so, how how Minnesota won all their games last year. Yeah, the rest of the pitching staff wasn't quite. How did Minnesota win last year? Autumn Peace. <laughs> Next question. Who who's responsible for most of Minnesota's wins? Autumn Peace. <laughs> Man. Who who's the best player? Theater. Who's the best player on Minnesota's softball team? Autumn Peace. Who deserves to be in the Minnesota Golden Gophers Hall of Fame? Autumn Peace. Who is Minnesota softball? Autumn Peace. <laughs> Just change the logo. Put her face as a logo. <laughs> <laughs> the Minnesota Pieces. Pieces. <laughs> Pe the Minnesota Peace. <laughs> Just a couple green dots on the jerseys. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Uh, anyways, I was saying she put up some pretty stellar career um numbers did you happen to look at that the, her career numbers i did not well specifically the ones that that stuck out to me was again her walk to strikeout ratio reminder 273 strikeouts last year career yep. 600 nice 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 113 walks that's pretty solid yeah, so Autumn Peas just really, really Peas. put the team on like a backpack. Just walked said, around. Hit her stepping up to the plate. Peas, don't strike me out. It's horrible. <laughs> Peas, just throw it down the middle. <laughs> All right, but they do have Kayla Chavez coming back. He started third base for him last year. She about 342 with 11 home runs, 34 RBIs, 35 runs scored. On base percentage, abysmal, 369. <laughs> She's pretty much hitting or going back to the dugout. Yeah, we're either getting a hit or – I mean, isn't that the name of the game, though? We're either getting a hit or we're going to duck out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. She could get walked here and there. She only had seven walks. <clears throat> I mean. Yeah, okay. Kayla Chavez. Pretty, pretty. I mean, when you're talking about average and um, – you know, driving in runs and like she's pretty good. That's pretty good offensive projection from Chavez. Just getting on base is not not her strong suit. We'd like to see it become her strong suit. So we have more to talk about than just autumn peace. Sorry. 
anyways, um, one returner who did have a pretty solid on base percentage, uh, Taylor. How did we decide? Crap, crap, crap. Yes, crap. Thank you. <laughs> crap. Got it. Um, she had a three forty two batting average with a four forty six on base percentage. Much better. Yeah, much, yeah, much that's better. nice. That's nice. That's um, nice. We like that. Round of applause. We like that. Uh, hit eight doubles, fourteen home runs. Pretty solid. Twenty five walks. Um, and then on the opposite side of the ball, defensively, as a catcher, obviously you get way more chances. So she had four hundred two chances, and had a nine eighty eight fielding percentage. That's that's a pretty good catcher in my opinion. And then threw out ten people, ceiling. So, I'm sticking yeah, with I'm, Taylor, Taylor Kraft going back there again. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt. You'd like to see her be in in the 990 or above fielding percentage-wise. But, understandably, you know, when you get – when you're involved in every single pitch, every once in a while you're going to – Brick one off the hands, or one's going to squirt through the five hole, is what it is. Um, but a, a, another another returner who actually had a good on base percentage is Jess Oakland, who started shortstop for them last year. She batted three twenty two with a four thirty five on base percentage. Uh, she had fourteen home runs, forty five that. 45 RBIs, 41 runs scored, and walked 33 times. Why are you making that face? You may say, why am I making this face? But I'm looking at her stats compared to Taylor Kraft's stats. It's to the Taylor stats. Yes, yes. Jess Oakland had eight doubles with 14 home runs. Guess who else had eight doubles with 14 home runs? Really just Taylor. Me, yeah. Taylor, yeah, Taylor Craft. Crafted. Mm-hmm. It really just tripped me up. And then Jess Oakland had 45 RBI, which was right behind the 48 RBI that Taylor Craft had. I mean, are what are you experiencing the Twilight Zone right now? Like what's going on? Yeah, I just got really thrown off. That should have been the theme music. <laughs> We're on the Hollywood Tower of Terror ride right now. You're so dumb. I got really confused. Anyway, Jess Oakland provides some pretty good uh, offensive production for the old Minnesota Go Gophers. So look for her to do more of the same this year. Hopefully, she has a couple more pieces surrounding her to help boost the team offensive production. Um, Minnesota goes out and grabs two transfers in Morgan DeBoard, who comes from Loyola Marymount. She's a grad transfer from LMU, about a 307 with nine home runs, 28 RBIs, and 35 runs scored last year. Uh, she was first team West Coast Conference, all conference last year. Um, and LMU made it to a regional last year. So has postseason experience, has played against bigger schools, power five schools, still putting up, you know, relatively good numbers. So you know, hopefully she can make a better, uh, a significant impact with Minnesota this year. Um, really help help boost their offensive numbers so that way Minnesota can take that next step. All right, on to one of their freshmen, Jessa Snipes. Uh, she's a pitcher, so could possibly help fill the hole of, of Autumn Peas <laughs> and Carrots. Come on, dog, don't do that to her. It says the one who was going peace earlier. My son said that. What do you want? What do you want from me? 
my son was my son's super cute and it, his name is Rawlings he's he can be a soccer player no maybe maybe i mean if that's what he wants to do but thus far he 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 likes to play catch he picks things up and swings them like a bat and he says dinger so it's Kent Murphy's kid <laughs> gone forever Ooh, anyways, right. back to Justice Snipes. Ooh. Uh, Gatorade, Minnesota Softball Player of the Year. Obviously a really good accolade to have. On those top are, of that... Those are two different awards. No, she was the Minnesota Gatorade Softball Player of the Year. Okay, but she also won Minnesota's Miss Softball Award. Yes. Okay. Yes. I thought uh, uh, maybe I just wasn't listening to you. I thought you like squished them together, try to make it one award. No, no, I'm not going to take that away from me. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Continue. it's because I said Gatorade Minnesota softball player of the year, but Minnesota Gatorade softball player of the year is what I meant. Um, on top of that, word for word, crap ton of awards and honors. <laughs> uh, multiple multiple state and conference championships. Uh, just a solid player. 18 and 0 mark in the circle last year with a 1.27 ERA. Um through 115 significantly innings. better than Minnesota's pitching staff. Correct. Through 115 innings struck out 185 batters in 23 games, mind you. So let's just take that in for a second. 1.27 ERA. Could have used that last year. I was about to say, could possibly bring down that 2-2-1 ERA that they're working with going into this year. So I'm thinking she's probably going to see some time in the circle. Most likely. I, I would imagine so, yeah. I, I would be surprised if she didn't. They bring in some other pitchers too, obviously, to try to bring this pitching staff up to – the next echelon, the next tier. Um, but yeah, I, I I would expect Jessa Snipes to be the one who steps into a, a a significantly impactful role right off the bat. All right, so we move on to other notable players in the conference. Ashley, what do you got for other notable players? All right, I'm going to save one that I think is probably the most obvious for last um, and kick it off with Emily Maddock. Maddock? Maddock. Um, she's at Penn State, nonetheless. Um, and for Penn State last year, she was the first player since 2017 to oh, receive oh. an award. She was all Big Ten first team. Um, so that in itself is an accomplishment. Now, she did see significantly less time than most players would, which is why I've got her on my other notable players list. I'm thinking this year we might see her a little more often. She only had 98 at-bats last year, um, but in those 98 at-bats recorded a 439 batting average and a 491 on-base percentage. So, Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, pretty, pretty strong stats just in those 98 at-bats, and you have to wonder, I don't know if those at-bats came – I would assume they came later in the season because if somebody's batting like that in the beginning of the season, why would you not keep them in is my thought process. Right. But I'm thinking we'll see her. We'll, she'll see more time on the field in, in this upcoming season in 2024. Yeah. I mean, putting up that kind of, those numbers, I would. It's like they say, if, if, if you can hit, we gonna find a spot for you. Yeah. All right. Who's next? <laughs> All right. Um, another notable player for the Big Ten this year comes from Ohio State. Uh, Melina Wilkinson, their top batter for them, led her team in eight offensive categories. Um, she had a 373 batting average, 439 on base percentage, racked in 66 hits with seven triples, 11 home runs, scored 50 runs with 44 RBI and had 13 stolen bases. Um, pretty solid numbers. And then additionally, did not lead the team, but put up 14 doubles. 
Yeah, she didn't lead the team by one double. Yeah. So, rats. Yeah. Just an offensive also, threat all around. Also, played in 53 games and started all 53 games. And that's how many total games they played last year. So she started every single game last year. It's pretty, just, pretty, pretty, pretty reliable. Just the fact that she scored 50 runs, put up 44 RBI, is kind of just blowing my mind a little bit. I don't know why. But I feel like 50 runs scored is, in the Big Ten, it's not a number that's really been talked about. Like 50 runs is a lot. Yeah, I mean, the only other person that I can think of that put up numbers like that is no longer in the Big Ten. Right. Taryn Kern. So. No, I, yeah. I believe Taryn Kern's numbers were better. I definitely wouldn't be surprised if they were. I'm pretty sure Taryn Kern was more like 60 RBIs and like 40 something runs scored. 68. 68 and 68. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to um, look. I was just going to Owen Wilson it and just, <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, there's not much else to say to it. So, um, Then the last, <laughs> the last notable player for the Big Ten that I have is transferring in from none other than Oklahoma, and that is Jordy Ball. And if you follow the softball world in any, any form, you know who Jordy Ball is. Kind of hard not to. She's everywhere around the softball world. Um, but just in case, for whatever reason, you don't know what she's capable of. She is one of the best pitchers that softball has seen, I would say. Um, and career-wise has put up ridiculous numbers. Um, numbers that aren't seen anywhere. Put up a 44-2 and record in her time at Oklahoma. With 288.2 innings pitched, in which she brought in a .99 ERA. <laughs> so, could you imagine how how many more innings and how many more strikeouts she would have if she didn't have the best offense behind her in the country? Because they played how many so run many... rules they've given <laughs> they've given yes <laughs> they've played so many five inning games. Either that, or you have the opposite, where she now has to pitch seven innings more often, and she gets tired. I, I, I don't feel like the that happening, but yeah, I feel like the opposite would be true. I feel like she would just continue to pad her stats, but do you never know? Yeah, I, I think just... I think we'll find out. Yeah, I'm super interested to see how she does in the Big Ten. I mean, she's she's going to do well. Oh, no doubt about it. I'm super interested to see how she does in the Big well, Ten. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying she's going to a team. I'm super that's interested to see her, her put up 45, 45 <laughs> wins this year. She's going to a team that's going to make her play seven innings. Maybe instead of giving up three hundred ninety-seven strikeouts in two years, she gives up, or she she only has. Just, just shut up. Come on. It's Jordy Ball, dog. Hey, do you know she also hit a couple times at Oklahoma? Yeah, I did. I knew that. I knew that. She's a pretty good little hitter. Yeah. I'm not bad. Better than some of the other hitters in the conference. Yeah, I mean, she didn't get that many at bats, though. No, I think she only had like 30. Yeah. Not very many. 
All right. Now it's time for sleepers. Catching Z's, baby. And I feel like you picked a team that's probably not as good as mine. Oh, I definitely didn't pick a team that's good as good as yours. I don't know what yours is, but I'm just going to assume here. So I am willing to bet that you picked a team not knowing the stats that you just read. So, do you want to do you want to go on the count of 3 or do you just want to tell me your terrible pick right now? I don't like how you're assuming. I just spit everywhere. How you're assuming that you know who I or who did you pick? Oh, I don't know who you picked, but I know who you didn't pick. Okay, we'll go on the count. We'll go on the count of three. <laughs> All right. One, hey. two, three. Ohio State. Michigan. No way, bro. No, you're just hoping for the early 2000s Michigan to show back up. I literally, <laughs> literally put in my notes that had so much previous success. Because they did. Mich- Michigan used yeah. to be really, really good. Yeah. 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 They did. They used to be. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now, when I was when I was looking through um all the Big Ten teams, I was really, really excited about Maryland because they they had a pretty decent team batting average. It wasn't great. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it it was it was good enough. It was, I mean, it was on par with all the other ones that we've read so far. Um. But they stole like 120 or 130 some bags as a team. And I was like, geez, if they could just pitch better, which is the same, same, old, same Achilles, old Achilles heel <laughs> for everybody. Um, the only reason I didn't pick Maryland was because they got an entire – new coaching staff. They got new head coach and all new assistants. So they're having to, the coaches are having to implement their program, their culture, and all of the players are having to adjust to that. And I just think that's a lot for a team to have to adjust and overcome a previous year's performance, to, like I just don't see it happen. I think it's too much in one year. Um, it's not to say it can't be done. I I think Maryland's a, a a fairly solid ball club, and I think that they 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 can give some teams a run for their money. But I just think you know, you're, when you're trying to when you're trying to crest that hump and 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 also adjust to a new coaching staff. Like I think that's just it's it's just not necessarily a recipe for extreme levels of success. So I went with Ohio State. They were thirty three and twenty last year. Not like super impressive with that that record. Um, it's decent. It's better than some of the teams records that we saw in the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, but <laughs> they fit, they go 12 and 11 in conference last year. I think that they can, I, I really think that they can do better this year. Um, I mean, they batted three Oh four as a team last year, which was third in conference um, better than two of the teams that we have already talked about. Uh, they put up 306 runs, which was also third in the conference. Again, better than Minnesota. Uh, they had a team on base percentage of 384, which was also third in the conference. They're returning th- their three 
or three of their best bats from last year in Molina Wilkinson, Sam Hackenbracht, and Cammy Cordacrax, who I'm out. Those are some sick last names. Yeah, those are yeah, yeah. They're they're impressively complicated. Yeah. Um, but between the three of them, you got 26 home runs. They all batted over 300. I think I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, yeah. They all batted over 300 uh, with Cammy Cordacracks at the lowest with 318. The other two, you're talking almost 400. Um, and then on the pitching side. They bring back uh, both of their workhorses from last year in Allison Smith and Emily Rook. Yeah. All right, so Allison Smith last year goes 17 and 11. She's a senior this year. Uh, she goes seven and eleven, seventeen and eleven last year. She throws one hundred and eighty-one and two-thirds innings, and has two hundred and three strikeouts. Um, with well, with a three oh four ERA. Um, so I mean, like her ERA is not great, but it's on par with everybody else. You know, like it's. It's not autumn peas, but but I mean, it's on par with everybody else in the conference. So like, I wouldn't. Ex I I don't see why she wouldn't perform. Just you know, just as well as everybody else. Uh, and then who was the other one we said? Emily Ruck, right? I think so. Yeah, Emily Ruck. Last year is 10 and 9. That was 110 and two thirds innings. Mm. Now, her ERA, you're, she's sitting at a 398 from last year. Um, obviously, Allison Smith is going to be their, their workhorse, their ace. Um, but I mean, you're just talking about a little bit better defense behind you, a little bit more run support, and maybe a little bit better command on your pitches from a year ago. Like, I, I think Ohio State, if they can just figure out a little bit of their, a little bit of their game inside the circle, like offensively, they're going to go toe to toe with everybody. Yeah. Um, and your pig just I'm thinking, your pig just sucks. I ain't gonna do that. Your pig just sucks. I'm just wishful thinking over here, and now none of my stuff is loading, so I can't pull up the information yeah, that I had. Well, but you just maybe... wanted you just wanted to be able to say "Go Big Blue," and or "Go Blue." Is it "Go Blue"? It's "Go Blue." I think it's blue. Yeah, I don't think there's. Yeah, I don't think it's big, big blue. Big blue is Kentucky. Oh. <coughs> yeah, well. But you're wrong. You made a dumb pick. It's okay. Just say you made a dumb pick. I made a but better, it might better not pick. Be, it might not be that dumb. Come on, dog. It's, I mean, it's a little out there for sure. But they're, bringing, they they're bringing in a couple of decent players. I can't even take you seriously. All right. <laughs> Who do we think is going to win the Big Ten this year? I want I want to say Indiana. <laughs> but it's it's just a little risky because if your they, answer is anything other than Nebraska, you're wrong. Please. 
Who's hitting off a Jordy ball? Obviously, a few people hit off of her if her ERA is not zero. I feel like you're being really judgmental tonight. Just those of you who aren't watching the video, just biggest eye roll ever. Like, come well, on. The thing is, is listen, know... listen. Nebraska <laughs> batted three oh eight last year. They had the same conference record as Minnesota, and Minnesota just was like, mm, yeah. I guess they had the head to head, and freaking Big Ten was like, oh, here you go, Minnesota. Minnesota gets the, the three seed in the conference tournament. This they had the same conference record. And Nebraska, their overall record was just a little bit less impressive than Minnesota's. They were 36 and 22 on the year last year, but they batted 308. They had 63 home runs. They only scored 289 times, but that's one more run than Minnesota. It's one more run than Minnesota. They had a 371 on base percentage, which isn't great, but it's, you know, it's on par with freaking Minnesota and Northwestern. It's on par. All right. You know what it's not on par with, though? Indiana. So. Indiana can't pitch. They might can. Did they add Jordy Ball to their roster? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm going to double down on what I just said. Indiana can't pitch. Neither can Northwestern. Neither can Minnesota. Gatorade Player of the Year, Jesse Snipes, you ain't Jordy Ball. You ain't it, dog. At the very least, I'm going to say it's going to be Indiana and Nebraska. It's going to be Nebraska. Competing. Nebraska. Indiana lost Taron Kern. And Nebraska gained Jordy Ball. This is an easy pick. Oh, I forgot that little fun fact when I was putting together my, my Indiana just lost 120 runs. It's Jordy Ball and Nebraska. They're going to win the conference. The corn huskers. I was about to say, are they the corn huskers? I didn't know if I made that up in my mind. I didn't like that, that we just scratched our head at the same time. You really think Jordy Ball is going to carry him the whole way? You want to know what I wrote down? You know what? You want to know what I wrote down for today's hot take? What? Have you ever seen? You've watched Gilmore Girls, right? No. What? Okay. That just killed your vibe. I, <laughs> just killed your vibe, didn't it? A little bit, because I had a Luke in Gilmore Girls, which I'm sure a large majority of our audience has watched Gilmore Girls because it's a girl show that my wife made me watch. Right. That's what I'd say to you. Well, she has. She's watched it since we've been married. She's probably she's probably watched it start to finish like 12 times. Because it's nostalgic for her. Because she watched it growing up. Anyway, maybe not though. Maybe, you know, my wife and I are in our 30s and you're still in your 20s, so. Maybe they haven't. Anyway, in Gilmore Girls, 
Luke owns a diner. And every time he brings out a plate, he walks to the restaurant. Hot plate, hot plate, hot plate. So today's hot take, hot take, hot take. Oh. Is Indiana's lack of transfers is going to come back to haunt them. However, they may have some of the cleanest uniforms in the game. Just going to throw that out there. I don't disagree with you on the transfer thing or the uniform thing. Yeah, I was about to say. Is... Yeah. yeah, I don't disagree on either of those statements. I think the transfer, the, the no transfer, um, not their best idea. They were like, I, I, I mean – Maybe, you know, you're trying to keep that T-Mobile circle at a five, you know, right? Your innermost friends trying to be like Drake, no new friends. Oh, my God. Maybe it works out. I don't know. (laughs) I'm going to vote no. And I'm going to say Jordy Ball wins the conference tournament with, with Nebraska. I guess we'll just have to wait and see because I don't want to say that I don't want Jordy Ball to go over there and be a conference winner. I don't want that to happen. Here's here's what I don't think will happen. I don't think Nebraska, with the addition of Jordy Ball, is going to win the College World Series. I don't think that they'll get to the College World Series because they won't have the same offensive production that Jordy Ball had behind her at Oklahoma. However, she's going to be by far the best pitcher in the conference. They're going to win the conference. It is what it is. If they don't win the conference, it's because Jordy Ball broke her freaking pelvis. Oh, don't wish that upon her. I don't. I don't. I don't want that to happen. I don't want Jordy Ball to break any bones in her body at all. I'm just saying, like, something freak would have to happen. Jordy Ball would have to be out. And they she'd have to be out for, like, the year for anybody besides Nebraska to win this conference. And I wholeheartedly believe that. And I'm going to stand by it. And when it happens, you're going to say, you, I told you, so. you, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I told you so. And you're going to owe me. We'll just, we'll just keep it. We'll just keep it clean. You'll owe me a Coke. All right. I could do that. Or maybe. Maybe like a Sonic breakfast burrito or something. Some Mentos in it before I hand it to you. Though. Cherry limeade. All right, got it. Sonic, if you want to sponsor this episode, that'd be great. <laughs> Shameless plug. <sighs> Brought to you by Not Sonic. Brought to you by Robbie Nashley. Just. We won't get paid to do this. Yep. Is that all you got for today? That's all I got for today. Uh, yeah, because your sleeper pick sucked. Okay, well, whatever. That's the best comeback I've come up with. Just whatever. Loser. All right, well. <sighs> That'll be it for this episode of Yellow Ball. We'll catch you next time.